seems like your hubby's been really grumpy and barking at you and um, short fused and perhaps yelling, uh, maybe even some name calling and possibly even dropping the F bomb. Right? It's so painful. I get it. And when we're hurt, it's so common actually that we devalue our partner and call them names or say harsh words. And it's not right at all. Um, and yet, if we can shift out of like judging them and making them wrong to, to a place of compassion, maybe an understanding that usually under anger, there's a hurt, there's a woundedness, there's something going on that's having them lash out like that in a less than virtuous way. And God loves them and God loves you. So the question is that if we're going to stay in relationship rather than pulling away, which is the natural thing to do, we pull away and up goes the wall. If we're going to stay in relationship, then it kind of means that we need to learn how to navigate these things a little bit better. And so that's why I'm coming to you today to try to give you some thoughts and some ways maybe to consider. Because who's the only one that you have control over, right? The only one we can control is ourselves. We can't control what the other person's doing. You know, um, and actually this week on several coaching calls, it came up um, because of the readings last week where Jesus's um, instruction in the Gospel of Matthew was when Peter asked, how many times do I have to forgive or do we forgive seven times? Because in the old law, uh, Jewish law, it was six times. And Peter's saying one more and Jesus says 77 times. It's like, oh, <laughs> right. Following Jesus is not easy. That is a lot of forgiveness. And is it humanly possible? Maybe for some, but for me, no. Like, I know that I need God's help uh, to choose love and forgiveness over and over because um, in my human condition, it does not come easy. And I'm guessing if you're listening to this, it probably doesn't come easy for you either. But we have an amazing God. And I've had many clients express how beaten down they are when he talks trash, right? And he's using those harsh, critical words and that F-bomb, man, it's, oh, it just, it just hurts many of us. But if we get angry back, it's like a cancer that's growing in us. And it still oozes out, even if we, you know, think, um, no, one way or another, right? Like the cancer, the anger, the cancer is in us. It oozes out in all our relationships that we're snappy at the kids, we're short-tempered, um, you know, maybe we had got a little bit of road rage going on, but where it, it just oozes out of us. And the evil one does a dance, quite frankly, because he's got his grips into us. And he even plants those little lies as he slithers in about how awful our spouse is and maybe we married the wrong guy. Mmm, right? But... St. Augustine actually tells us that when we're resentful, it's like we're drinking the poison, hoping that the other person's going to die. It doesn't work. So we ruminate on the pain. We dwell on it. We go over it in our heads over and over again. We repeat it. We'll talk to friends about it. And it is cancer. It poisons us. And the other person's probably quite likely out there just living their life, doing their thing at that point, right? So in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus actually instructed us oh, to love and to pray for our enemies if we are his. Oh my gosh, I know how hard this can be. I have been painfully hurt many times in my life. Um, and by turning to God, only his strength. He has been able to transform my hurt and anger into compassion, you know, especially when, you know, if I can step into humility and kind of stepping into their shoes to see maybe that they're hurt, that there's a deep wound over there and that anger oftentimes comes out or control because there's a pain underneath. But when we stop blaming and wagging our finger like at that other person, and we humbly take responsibility for our own action and what we're bringing to the relationship, there's a shift and there's hope and there's an open door for God to come in and work a miracle. 
You know, in fact, you know, I've actually been coached that taking 100% responsibility for the downfall of a relationship is the way to healing. Not easy. Um, and it, But it is what I did with my mom. For instance, my mom and I had had a lot of battles for a lot of years. And um, I was able to do that, thankfully, before she died. And we were able to open our home and take care of her. And that was a huge grace from God because she and I had butted heads for a lot of years because she judged my husband pretty harshly. Um, and then even when my husband and I got back together, it was me. I actually took 100% responsibility for everything that had gone wrong in our relationship. And I apologized for disrespecting him and um, I took the responsibility. Even though I wanted to argue about all the ways that he had hurt me but that was just going to keep it going. And so I chose through humility to take um, responsibility and stand in a place of healing rather than being right. And my own concupiscence, my own inclination towards sin is like, no, I want to be right. I don't want to give mercy. But that's not how God loves. So leaning on that superpower of humility really our lady is the one who shows us how to do that. I mean, Mary, holy smokes, right? Talk about humble. Um, that was her superpower. And so to grow into being a better person like her, um, more loving, more kind, mm, like I need to lean on her. I need to look at her as a role model. I need to bring God into my life. Because turning to God, like I said, opens that door to, to miracles that we cannot do on our own. Now, forgiving does not mean giving the other person, uh, you know, a pass if they hurt you. It, but it does mean putting our trust in God, that God can heal that person and heal the relationship and bring restoration. That he can redeem the situation far better than we can by being angry, by lashing out, by having a cold war going on, uh, all those things. None of those things are going to bring, re bring restoration and healing. Um, yeah, it's God who can do the work. So it's like relinquishing control of the situation, bringing Christ's love in through our love and letting him perform the miracles, hopefully, in that person. But ultimately, we have no control over whether that person's really going to change or not. But what matters in the end for us is how we show up. Even if another person chooses to be hurtful and short-tempered and treat the person that they supposedly married and loved more than anyone else in the world harshly, that's on them. That's on them. What's on me is how I respond and how I show up. So we can certainly acknowledge the hurt, absolutely acknowledge the hurt, but to choose rather than disconnecting if, in fact, we want to stay in the relationship and heal the marriage, which we are called to as Catholic women, we are called to always learn how to love better and to stand for our marriages, then we choose intentionally to let go of the pain with God's grace and to choose to love and to choose to forgive. You can let them know that they hurt you and, you know, you can set up a boundary, which is for you as to what you're willing to do or not do. And you can state that you really do want to restore trust and love in the relationship. You can set your intention and you can show up in that way, moving forward, trying to see the best, trying to look for the good, trying to um, bring out the best in them by you being your best, right? So regardless of who they're choosing to be, what you have control over is how you show up and the person that you are in life. And I really want to keep showing up more kind, more loving, more faithful. And so I keep praying and keep praying. And because I know I and you have been given so much grace and forgiveness for God, because I certainly have made a whole lot of mistakes in my life, but God literally took every sin with him to the cross. He has. And so it's like, oh my gosh, when I look at his example, it's like, you know, arms spread wide, nails going through, he's taking the sins and he's still asking God to forgive them. It's like, oh, how did he ever do that? Well, because he's God, right? But he's showing us that we too can, through God's grace, be able to forgive others, whether they change or not. In fact, every time we pray the Our Father, we're actually acknowledging that we are going to be forgiven 
as we forgive others. And holy smokes, when that really landed in my heart, it was a wake up call. It's like, oh wow, like I really have to do better at forgiving because I'm gonna be judged by the same way that I judge others. That's pretty powerful stuff. So I would rather really um, focus on praying for them and forgiving them than losing sleep and ruminating on the pain and the fault and uh, you know all everything that they're doing wrong. Because that just keeps me as a victim. And I don't want to be a victim. I really don't. I want to conquer that ego and show up as a better human being. And the more that we follow God's lead and love and forgive as he commands us to do, whoa, that we're going to be more and more joy and peace in our hearts. And isn't that really what we want? My invitation is not to allow your feelings, right, the feelings to be the compass of your life. Instead, go to God. He is a far better compass the more that we can learn what he's telling us. And he tells us, actually, to take our captives, our thoughts captive. In 2 Corinthians, he tells us, take, take, take your thoughts captive. But most of us have no clue how to do that. But I can help you. As a certified mindset coach and a marriage coach and a life coach, all those things, right? I've learned a skill to be able to take your thoughts captive and through a reason cycle that can help you to be able to sort them out. Because it's always your thoughts that create your emotions, which then creates how you show up and ultimately the result that you're getting in life. And so most of us, like we come right up, boom, something happens, we feel triggered, there's an emotion, and we react, we respond. But that's not really the best place. It's kind of like a toddler, honestly. Like toddlers just like they feel something and before you know it, they're on the floor having a tantrum or, you know, they didn't get what they want, so they're crying. And so it's all on an emotional level, but that's not your powerful place to come from. Instead, figuring out the thought that's creating the emotion, now you're stepping into your power. What thought is it? And I can teach you a whole process on how to be able to learn how to... Um, to do all that, right? It's too much for a call like this, a uh, video like this. But um, I just want you to know that there, are, there's help, there's resources, there's things that you can do to start shifting up how you're responding so that you can be your best self even when somebody else is hurting you. There's possibility, okay? So be sure that you've joined the Happy Wife community. I'll put the link down below. And like and subscribe to the channel so that you keep getting videos um, and stay. Feel free to message me. I'm happy to connect uh, and see if working together is, um, is the, a great step for you in becoming your best self. All right. God bless you.